All right. Ready? Yeah. Hi, I'm here, Matt, with Oregon Fly Fishing Blog, and we're here with Derek Fergus, and we're going to talk a little bit about the flies that he's developed and uh, some of the some of the common pitfalls in tying some of these flies. So, Derek, okay. can you talk to me a little bit about the mole leech and the mole leech? Uh, the mole leech was uh, designed, I think, about eight years ago, I think, and uh, it was a fly that I wanted to. Uh, fish every, all my buddies are fishing standard strung out leeches and so on and so forth so we've all seen flies with the the rabbit strip sticking out the back much like this one is where you just have a strip coming out the back but i wanted to tie something that was completely 360 and uh the benefit is that it'll grab a soft seam on either side of this and it'll just snake to a uh, to a uh, position and find itself in the seam more naturally so uh the mole leash was tied completely on a string. As you can see, the whole thing moves around. And uh, the versions that we're going to show even have less of a shank than the production ties. But um, it's just something that, uh, you know, leech, fish love leeches. I really believe it goes back to the old, the old uh, squid thing. And uh, a lot of guys like movement, and this moves better than just about anything. So the goal was to tie something that didn't have a rudder in the back and just moved as freely as possible. That was the whole goal of this fly. So, so what are the common mistakes that you see when people try to tie these? The common mistakes are a lot of guys will reverse wrap the fly, and that's how they keep it. And what this, the secret behind the mole leech is super glue, tr traditionally. Uh, most everybody's tied string leeches like this. The only unique thing about the mole leech has been the advent of adding multiple colors into one fly. So. A lot of your standard old strung out or old uh, string leeches only had one color, much like this one. And with the advent of the mole leech and using super glue, we can just a second here. We can add in colors at any point in the fly. So uh, when I went to Vietnam and got the factory set up, the uh, I came back and these gals had mole leeches that were five and six colors. And so uh, we can you can do that. You can do whatever you want. But uh, I would say more importantly that the, uh, the other mistake that people make is uh, they generally, this, the length between the back gets too long and they all, everybody has a tendency to uh, want to interchange this hook. For some reason we, ha we feel like we want to interchange the hooks and, the, and that's the biggest downside that I see with people tying this fly is that uh, they'll do that and then this hook sticks out too far and it will foul so easy on the rabbit but and another mistake that people make is they don't use the gel spun that's really soft notice how this gel spun is very soft and supple they'll use something that's very rigid and that really defeats the whole purpose of the mole leech it needs to be tough line that has a real soft texture to it that's very limp Great. so talk to me a little bit about some of these other patterns you brought up today i really like this giant egg pattern. The strung out fat freddy uh, you know, this, this fly was, uh, again, I was in Alaska and I had a shop owner come to me and say, would you please make a Fat Freddy? And I thought, you know what, I, I just, I'm not into to copying anybody's flies. I really like to put a little bit of my, a twist in it and uh, no pun intended, but I just, I wanted to make something that was a little bit different. So if any of you out there know what a Fat Freddy is, go online, look at it, you'll see what it looks like, and then look at this version. Um, the advent of, uh, this fly was again, most of the, the original fly had a, a, a long shanked a Tiemco 799 and uh, it would, you'd lose a lot of fish. And it just didn't have that ability to uh, land a lot of fish. This one is a strung out version so the hook just kind of dangles there and you have the advent of a short shanked hook. Also, you have the ability to have this weigh as much as possible. So I have a lot of guys that fish these even, even uh, they send them up and fish them under jigs, under bobbers and stuff for kinks. Cool. But uh, it was made for fly fishing. That's perfect. Uh, the strung out stones. Strung out stone. Uh, this this guy was derived literally from uh, fishing the Deschutes and got tired of watching my fly disappear in a fish's mouth over and over and over. And no matter how long I counted, no matter what I did, just hooking the rod downstream, setting it up, not doing anything at all, counting to three, not counting, setting it immediately. I bet I only landed 20% of all the fish that grabbed my stonefly. So 
in my you know long hours back and forth in between fly shops I just said there's got to be a better way and so uh, I came to the point where I realized that you know what it's totally legal to fish two hooks you know any other place why not put two hooks into one fly and uh, this actually is legal in any single barbless regulations in Oregon I've checked with the uh, ODF and W and this is considered a single hook even though it has two because they aren't really attached they are actually attached with a string so that is basically the same as a single barbless so what I happened what happened was is that a lot of these fish would come up and they'd suck this fly and they'd come up and hit it from the back or they'd hit it from the top and I just wanted a fly that went in both directions and uh, needless to say the first time we went out fishing this it was about a 65 to 70 percent land ratio and life was good nice I guess the last pattern I want to talk about is the 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 two-toned uh, minnow here I fished that a lot and I've done pretty well on salmon with that actually yeah this is uh again this uh the double bunny was originated in the one fly competition over in Jackson Hole Wyoming and uh, I had a shop over in Montana want me to develop basically a double bunny version but you know he uh, he lost a lot of big fish and he always came back to me and went man if I'd have just landed a few other fish I would have won the competition each year so what I decided to do is just develop basically a mole leech with all the advents of the mole leech so that it moves in every single direction but uh, you have the, uh, the ability to have a, a short shanked hook so that the fish comes up and grabs it you hook them and you land most of the fish that you hook and uh, I did have some places in Alaska that fished double bunnies for kings and for silvers and everything else, but generally this was tied, you know, specifically for trout, and so uh, we'd fish it with full sinking lines and just strip and rip. Nice. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming out, Derek. Appreciate you bet, it. Bud.